Exhibit A, Krispy Kremes. But yeah, they're the pizza of donuts. The Domino's of donuts, I suppose. That's yeah, that's the a good point. The pizza of donuts. What? <laughs> pizza of donuts. You kick yourself for making jokes and you're like, F now I've made my own joke and yeah. now I've got to commit. Like, what, 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 what? Who'd you want in a fight, Ooh. Johnny Cage or Nicolas Cage? Real gamer moments. Yeah, I, I <laughs> feel like... <laughs> And your fingers are without looking. It's on a guitar. You should always know. You should always know where your hands are without having to look. <laughs> oh, shit, they're in Azerbaijan yes. again. Oh, f I got a plane without me. Half an hour ago, they're like, we got some spare ones. Do you want it? And I was like, that feels kind of dodgy. Like, <laughs> what do you mean you've got a, some spares? <laughs> Getting hit by a 10 inch thing in bed. Not about it. Not about that. Not about that. Not Unless about you it. ask me first. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> clear i'm fine with it because some people make incredible games that i couldn't ever imagine and i get to experience it and i'd happily trade my imagination for everyone else's wow tenacity gogs but ding God, yes. I had that stop it <laughs> thing if you're walking down the street throw money at like a poor person not like forcibly uh, throw it at them <laughs> can you use that in a sentence please i think like tetris i know just stack shit and then if you stack it all well, <laughs> it all disappears. We went to the zoo and it was nice. And someone was like, where's the tiger? And loads of people walked past and I was like, there it is. And then they were like, and like ran back. <laughs> I saw a bear. What kind of bear? A sun bear, I think. Sun oh yeah, I know sun bear. Yeah. Yeah. So far you've just been describing gay men. You were like, I saw an otter. I saw a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way, Harrison. Are you attracted to mm. any alien women out of video games? I think everyone is. Yeah. It also taught me that when you grow up, you gotta wear tights, but when you're a child, you're allowed to wear, you know, show some leg. <laughs> <laughs> taught me that. You can uh, your time. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs>
No. And I was in there with my mates anyway. Um, and then, yeah, she uh, we started talking a bit and she asked me out. And then we nice. dated for like two years. She asked you out. She moved on you. She did. I told you that that is like 75 to 90% of my relationships. I'm too, I'm too awkward to say no. Not that I wanted <laughs> to say no. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was, you? it was pr- probably the same game for me as well. And again, I think we've discussed Halo 3 before. We had like a bit of a, it wasn't technically a LAN party because we all had our own uh, Xboxes and TVs and we were all using my wireless and the neighbor's wireless as well. Yeah, it was like, luckily we had a strong Virgin Media, like, I I don't think it was fiber optic at the point. At that point, but I don't think many people had the internet around us, so we were like oh, yeah. taking up probably most of the bandwidth for the town at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it, it was because it was like I'm trying to think how many there must have been of us. There must have been uh, easily eight, nine, maybe ten people at my house oh, at that wow. point. We, the we'd power actually bill say must have been mental. It, uh, it was insane. My mum had gone away, so I like I, I I capitalized on that. We became like <laughs> the the gaming hub of Nutsford, and we'd we'd been out into Manchester, and we'd gone to Krispy Kreme because I was like, all right, we're having a house party. Now we're gonna come back. We got to make sure we got some pretty good food, you know. Yeah. Exhibit A: Krispy Kremes. So <laughs> I buy a box of twenty four of all the selection donuts. You know, you get all the good ones. You get like the what were they called? The is it the chocolate dream dream cake or something? They're like filled with chocolate goo and you get the caramel dream cake. You get all sorts. Sure. But because I bought because I bought the box 24, they gave me a free box of another 24. Ooh. So we had, we had 48 donuts. A crispy between cream like 10 of us. Domino's, where it's like they're obscenely priced, but they've always got like a buy one, get one free, so it kind of yeah. levels out. They are, yeah. They're the they're the, the yeah, they're the pizza of donuts. The Domino's of donuts, I suppose. That's yeah, that's the a good point. The pizza of donuts. What? The pizza of donuts. <laughs> ah, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, I, I, I went off a little bit there. <laughs> I was daydreaming about the donuts. I was dreaming about the donuts, yeah. I just had a I, pizza I, and speak... I'm feeling a bit rough after it, to be honest. Oh, mate. I wish I had a pizza. I, I've been making yeah, these dank, like, it's nearly pizza, but without, it's not, tomato sauce it's like sliced tomatoes and it doesn't have cheese it's more like a garlic bread with tomatoes on which is re- still really nice it's, it's like pizza light you know you don't feel as guilty because you haven't got like filled with cheese oh uh, yeah i can see that that's fine good. yeah jordan will allow it guys it's all right. uh, just jordan like a jordan it. approves thing comes across the screen <laughs> yeah but oh now i've got to make a graphic <laughs> <laughs> this is what you used yeah. to do to me jordan i know i'm sorry flying, i'm like son of a bitch quick words fly across the screen i did it to myself as well it's fine you did you did to be fair you like, you kick yourself for making jokes and you're like fuck now i've made my own joke and yeah. now i've got a commit like, what, 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 was that joke worth the bit fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly my point Can we commit to the bit as we always commit. say we didn't at all we committed to like 10 20 seconds 20 percent of the off. bit oh I, yeah I the mask said eyes off uh, eyes off. Oh, God, sunglasses yeah. are going back on. Face so off, on. Nicolas Cage. Cage off. I would like to see... Do you think any movie podcasts have done like a cage off? You know, like the craziest cage moments. I suppose they I must have. Cage's Kiss might... Do you think Cage's Kiss must have done that? If not, Cage's Kiss. You, I hope that you're working on that. I'd like to see this big cage off moment. And cage when you off. do, let me know. Cage Johnny off. Johnny Cage off. Who'd win in a fight? Ooh. Johnny Cage or Nicolas Cage? I, I think... Johnny Cage would win, right? You'd hope. What is I'd, this I'd episode so. on? We're talking about how video games have influenced our lives. I know. Well, apparently they just made made us really fucking skittish about random <laughs> things and going off on tangents. <laughs> that is us. As far as I'm yes. aware, that's all we do. Well, I mean, speak, speaking about shooting, like shooters and stuff, just yep. to like dwell on that like mind moment, I think that it's definitely <laughs> given me better hand-eye coordination. Like I, I've funny. always had good exactly look at that i'm like ooh, and it's given me good segue moments real gamer moments yeah i i <laughs> feel <gamer> like <laughs> i've always had had uh, good hand-eye coordination anyway and it's mainly because like playing guitar helps because you know like where your hand is and your fingers are without looking it's on a guitar. you should always know oh oh piece of wood mammy you, should, you yes. should always know where your hands are without having to look <laughs> 
Oh shit, they're in Azerbaijan yes. again. Oh fuck, I gotta play without me. I mean, how they're traveling across borders right now, we'll never know. But oh, yeah, yeah. You, sh you should always know. But like, see that, I'll throw in a clip. Remember when you threw those fucking badges at me? Yeah. More stuff for ghost things. I bought a ghost lock. Oh, that was a cat. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm glad I got that on film. I do. I remember that. And it was like, whap, and I managed to catch him. Yeah, Ninja I've always catch. had good hand-eye coordination. But I think gaming has really helped that because you sort of, your brain's calculating where your bullet's going to go very quick. And like, I've always been a sniper in games. I've always liked having a big old snipey boy, like the 50 cals. Look at my footage from COD if you want. There's a little clip somewhere around the screen. You'll be able to check out some to of those. To prove I know. To prove it, I am a snipey I love, boy. Uh, grenade launchers and bows in, uh, so playing Overwatch, I usually main Hanzo or Reinhardt. Okay. So Hanzo's the guy with mm -hmm. the bow. Yeah. I was playing it and my mate was over. It's like showing him because he never played it before. He was like, how are you hitting shots that far away with a fucking bow? Like, and it arcs <laughs> over and stuff like that. I was like, I have no idea. Just like, I just know where they go now. It's same with grenade launchers. Like, just kind of having a base idea of like, right, this is probably going to end up there. You know what I yeah. mean? Where it's, it does the arc. You just kind of get used to it. Yeah, I, I got a... Uh with a grenade yesterday on COD, me and Stu were playing and we ended the night with a win on uh, the fast-paced version of Warzone. It was like, oh, that was a nice little end. And I was like, Stu, I'm going to kick off on a win. I'm going to go to bed. And he was like, yeah, treat yourself. It was really nice. I'm going to kick off I, on a win. I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. How's it? It's 5 p.m. It doesn't matter. I, if I play <laughs> any longer, I will do badly. And I, I got a team wipe with uh, just a grenade just like ding 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 oh, like nice. round a corner around the tents and it was just like team wipe and i was like yes fuck that boy don't fuck that boy <laughs> that's not what i meant to say i was like it was supposed to be some of the celebration that came out of my mouth and it didn't uh jordan move us on quickly move, you, move us on okay well has researchers how to dig out of that hole games can allow you to actually do research into things or make you research things there you go you like that? not the only one who i can love do that segways. i know it's beautiful that mate so, so what's something you've researched? I have researched a stupid amount about Frostpunk and Dark Souls. Okay. So I think a lot of people have done research like when they were younger about like Pokemon, like rumors and shit like that. But mainly for me, it's like if I really like the lore of stuff, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll search into it. But that's given me kind of almost an idea of how to search things better, if that makes sense. How to okay, research a bit of Google better. Foo. Yeah, exactly. I'm a black belt in Google Foo, and not just because I used to do programming. But yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a valuable skill to have, and like also how to kind of structure things when you're learning, if that makes sense. So you need to know yeah. where to look first for things to make more sense. So it's been, it's, yeah, it's a really niche one, but it's something that I did pick up from games, which is weird to me. No, I think it's com it's completely like it makes sense because you you go through different le you, you're learning systems at the end of the day with games, aren't you? Like you're learning the different yeah. mechanics and how they work. And a lot of games, like even take like Breath of the Wild, that's the first one that comes to my mind. There's a game, uh, well, there's a sorry, a mechanic in there that it doesn't even teach you, and it's shield surfing. Yeah, you have and to meet a random person like ages into the game. Yeah, and it's such a cool mechanic. And it's like all these little experimentations, like with the cooking, for example, as well. Like you can find so much, int oh, sorry, so many interesting things in a game like that that you only really learn just from trying and exploring. And like th there's a lot of these videos that I've been seeing recently that are like 100 things you didn't know in Breath of the Wild. And then another yeah. one comes out, 100 more things. And I saw one the other day that was like another 50 things you didn't know. And it just seems like there's endless, endless things in games like that. Especially when Nintendo awesome. like it's doing it. Such a it. good game. Yeah, it, I need to go back and play more. I've been playing more of the master mode. Also, I just want to say that you got called out on uh, Shark Select this week for saying that, because Dark Souls obviously comes up a lot and Frostpunk comes up a lot. But they, Ryan was saying how you had said that Dark Souls was one of the best games of the decade or like yeah. of the however many that the past gen and then yeah. you said that you were you realize though you didn't really enjoy it while you were playing it and he was like well it's not the best fucking game of the decade then is it and it was just like well it still can be ryan so <laughs> yeah. we're calling you out you don't have to enjoy something so that for, for it to be amazing i don't, don't i don't have enjoy to enjoy something 
for it to be amazing. <laughs> I don't enjoy getting fucking injections, but if it's going to prevent me dying, you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of which, I just got a text about getting my COVID jab not like half an hour ago. They're like, we got some spare ones. Do you want it? And I was like, that feels kind of dodgy. Like, <laughs> what do you mean you've got a, some spares? About. It's down the back of the <laughs> yeah. sofa. Uh, yeah, we just found it I around the back in the bin. Yet. I need to no. I'm asthmatic as well. I should probably ask my doctor. Oi, give us a jab. Oi, jab me up. Do you want me to see if they got any other spares? And I'll just <laughs> nick one. <laughs> Wibbity wabbo. Give me the jabbo. Give me that jabbo. You know what I was saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. What were we saying? We got sidetracked. Ryan, uh, basically, about, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck, yeah, fuck you, Ryan. Love you, but fuck you. Yeah, I, I basically now, Both. if there's, yeah. thanks to games, if there's something I enjoy learning about, I will just read about it until I fall asleep, which is really weird. I don't think there's anything else, like, in my life where I'll just sit and read about something that doesn't matter. Because over over time, I'm just like, I don't give a shit. But with games, it's like, ooh, this is interesting. I like the world they've built. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I just want to pick on that. You just said you were, like, reading till you fall asleep. So either you're falling asleep at your computer, or you're falling asleep in bed with your phone, and it does it hit you in the face? Uh, if I'm falling asleep, I tend to know I'm falling asleep. I don't just, like... Huh. And then like drop the phone like directly on my face. I've done that before. No, you're not sucks. like me then. Yeah. No, it hurts. It's, it's, it's usually when I wake up in the morning and I turn over and I'm reading it and then my you know, your grip's not quite there. It just like whaps me in the yeah. face and I'm like, uh Whap. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it gets real bad. Like I'd never try to read from my iPad in bed because they're much heavier oh, than yeah. a phone. Oh yeah, brain you. <laughs> like get, getting hit by a ten inch screen is something uh, something else. <laughs> Getting hit by a 10-inch thing in bed. Not about it. <sighs> not about that. Not about that. Not Unless about you ask me first. Yeah. <laughs> so so what? when you're like looking into games then, is there anything that's like made you more skeptical about things? Because I see that you've got a note there. I do. I do have a note about mm. that. Uh, the only thing that... I, I tend to read up a little bit about game news and okay. I become skeptical as soon as there's anything to do with like... A company that's famous for loot boxes saying there won't be any. You know, that's... Yeah, I, yeah. It's mainly game law that I read up on about, but sometimes I go for the news. But yeah, video games have made me a lot more skeptical of mainly just people online. So okay. I feel like people our age, because we've grown up playing online games like RuneScape and stuff like that. If you got scammed at an early age on like at the Grand Exchange, you're not falling for a telemarketer scam. No, You're not no, falling no. for like, hi, I'm a Nigerian prince. Send me money. It's like, nah, I've dealt with you fuckers in the past. I'm not doing this. Yeah, we've got those digital street smarts. We don't we even do. need. We do. Yeah. My uh, my dad came up to me the other day. He was like, Jordan, it says that he's trying to this. Uh, I got a parcel from DPD. Uh, it says that trying to install this is like, could be harmful to my phone. I was like, why? Why, why are you still clicking it, it like, dad? Give it, fuck, give it it. <laughs> I was like, thank God. I'm glad you came to me. But why? You don't... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's just... warning you that it's harmful, stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's no, I get it's one of those where they've just never been in the situations like we know about it. Is there any that you've been actually dicked about in? Has anyone ever got you? Like when you were younger? Yes. In RuneScape. Okay. Someone Tell me was about like, it. So I was like, come with me to the wilderness. And I was like, okay. And then I went to the wilderness and they killed me. But they got like 500 gold pieces out of it. I well, it's a good job it. you did that in a game and not in real life. <laughs> I hope yeah. you're not this trusting all the time. Well, I, said, I was like, what, like seven or eight? <laughs> Something like that. I was like, I didn't know. It doesn't make it better. What if someone in the street was like, hey, little boy, come to the video woods. Game. I know about nonces. I don't, I oh, don't yeah, I, I got murdered and they took my stuff. And I was like, oh, no. And then... I, I didn't care because it was RuneScape and I was like, I won't be deterred from becoming a legend. <laughs> carried on playing. I wonder if Nine Rain ever got scammed but in the woods like that. Oh, he must have done at some point. It's so like a character building thing. You have to get <laughs> nonced at least once. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why Why are you such a nice person? I was nonced. Everyone, everyone at least once. RuneScape Everybody gets once. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've found that Gaming has definitely made me more creative because I think a lot of the worlds that you inhabit in them open your imagination a lot more. And I think 
I don't know if it was growing up with simpler games that has done that. Because I think that when we were kids, you had to imagine a lot more than what Back you were shown. Back in my day, you were shown. You know, you were shown like, like, what game is a good example? The old, the original Super Mario. You were given a little yes. bit of story, and like a, a, a minuscule bit of story. Really, it's basically just the princess is in another castle. You know that she's been taken to a castle, but the the world in itself of like the Mushroom Kingdom, you don't really see that much of it. All you see is sky, yeah. the flat bricks some trees, a couple of castles, and that's it, really. If you and look at sort the instruction of... manual, you learn that all the bricks are people. They are. Many people <laughs> might not know that. All bricks. those bricks you break in. Yeah, Mario is just... It is a massacre. Think how many bricks have been smashed on a single playthrough of Mario. Also, how did they get the stars inside them? Was that, that I don't lunch? know if the question mark blocks uh, people. I think some just secret the ones. bricks are... Yeah, that's ah, a good okay. point. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, because like the Shudder. the one up mushrooms have eyes as well, and they're like hidden things that come out of normal bricks. So are they like mushroom kingdom inhabitants? I don't That's know. never really explained, is it? No, I I can't I can't really say that I've spent long examining the lore of Super Mario. If I'm honest with you, well, we know what to do tonight. <laughs> Until I fall asleep, fall asleep, my phone hits yep. my face. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so with that kind of that kind of game and that kind of age of stuff, same for like when I was playing Mega Man as a kid, you're given a bit of story, but you're never really, it's never expanded upon like the city and the world and the base and like why, what, why are we here doing what we're doing and giving characters backstory. I got very exponential, yeah. not exponent, existential. Existential, why are yeah, we here? I, know. <laughs> I know what you mean, I know what you mean. As I, as, do you, have you found that as well at all from any games? Uh, What, like? They they made my creativity better. Yeah, like giving you more of an imagination as a kid. Like, because I found that no. it's like I think at I'm all. the opposite. <laughs> no way. I, I have no imagination, really. I, I I don't know if it's video games, or I just don't know if I'm not as imaginative as like other people. Because some people okay. are really like creative and stuff like that. But I, I play so many games that I don't. I don't know if I never had the imagination to begin with or if they've just sapped it out of me. But okay. just to be clear, I'm fine with it because some people make incredible games that I couldn't ever imagine and I get to experience it and I'd happily trade my imagination for everyone else's. Wow. That is a quote and a half. Fucking hell, Jordan. That might be the name of the episode. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, yeah. that's... A, a really cool way to look at it. And like, I know that you say you're, I suppose you've got more of an analytical brain. Like I think we've mentioned this oh, yeah. before that you, you're more Straight like up. figures and facts. Whereas I find myself like, computers. exactly. Yeah. Like I, I'm a person that, oh, I know that I can't relax. Like I'm <laughs> never more relaxed than when I'm creating. Like I use a creative output as, a way to relax. So like whether it's writing stories or working on music or doing artwork, that is what makes me feel, makes me feel complete and relaxed, you know? So <laughs> Whereas and I, mine's I, doing nothing. I have to do nothing to yeah. relax. You have to zone out. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know if it's games that have caused me to have that kind of personality, but I feel like they've only exacerbated it. If you know what I mean? Yeah, that's cool. So it might not just be that I'm, I've uh, had my creative energy sapped by video games that much, but I wasn't creative to begin with. It could be, it could be, but like it, it would go to say that you're more logical then, right? Yeah. So I'd like to think the video games have helped me become more logical. If that it's like problem I feel like solving, a bit of a yeah, exactly. Video games are basically they're all just puzzles uh, that you solve in different ways. So. Mm -hmm. The best example I can think of off the top of my head is probably XCOM. Have you ever played XCOM? No, I've played games that are of of much a muchness, like the new Gears Tactics <laughs> game and stuff. Exactly, yeah. Or the is it Mario raving whatever, and you've got him the with like Rabbit's a Kingdom or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that kind of teaches you to evaluate situations because if like you basically play as a squad of alien hunters 
and mm-hmm. aliens have invaded Earth or aliens have already taken over Earth, depending on which game it is. Classic. Um, and yeah, and you've got classic to... greys. <laughs> classic. They're fucking. They're, some of them were really creepy. The sectoids from XCOM Two were mental. Do yeah, you, like you showed me. Yeah, not um, nice. So if like you get your guys positioned up and you're evaluating the situation, and then you've always got to think that if enemy reinforcements come in, or you're moving for an area and you discover them, are you set up to the point where you can deal with it? Because it's all about preparation. It's like Hotline right. Miami as well. You can throw yourself at a situation over and over again, but if you find an ideal route, you can like kind of methodically make that better and better over time. It's just right. Okay, I think it's just the way my brain works. But I think that's probably why you like Hotline Miami so much. And like even why you like Dark Souls so much, I suppose, because that is very much like it's very complex puzzle solving. Like, you know, working out the timings of all the moves from the enemies and like throwing yourself at it time and time again. Like it makes you more tenacious as well. Like I noticed that my tenacity has gone up like plus 10 to my tenacity boots. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Has puts on his tenacity goggles. Tenacity gogs. But ding. God, yes. I had that. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know something I've always wondered? Because Wonder me I away. Noticed, it might just be my... I, I'm, I'm not going to make this go political or anything like that. I just, I just something okay. I've noticed over time is that people kind of our age who've grown up with video games, it might just be my exposure to it, but I feel like more people our age lean left politically than right. Would you say yeah, that's Yeah, I'd, I'd say that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to know whether video games have anything to do with it because I feel like my morals have been affected by video games. Because in video yeah. games, you're usually on the side of helping people out, being a good guy. You're very rarely a bad guy, really. Yeah. I feel like it gives you quite a strong moral compass. And that yeah, I think you're so. usually all the endeavors you go through tend to be like a left-leaning idea, like you're helping the poor and you're saving people's lives via such means and you're rebuilding a kingdom doing, you know, there's no, like, yeah. increasing taxes or anything dodgy. Like, obviously, it's not that fun otherwise. But it used, like, <laughs> uh, things like Papers, Please, you're letting people yeah. in against the rules of the state, which is an overbearing state. You're doing small kindnesses that would be left-leaning. You know what I mean? Yeah, And that is usually the angle of, like, the good guy. So I feel like I'm personally now more inclined to do the, like, nice things and the right thing. But those are based mainly on what I learn from through, you know, like, I don't really watch the news. I'm really happy for it. So I don't care about I couldn't watch the news. So, but video games over time have taught me these little lessons. Like, you know, do the nice thing. If you're walking down the street, throw money at, like, a poor person. Not, like, forcibly. Uh, throw it at them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just, like, that kind Put of thing. Put it in thing. the cup. I don't know yeah. if that's led to my... I, I feel like I'm a pretty nice person, but, obviously, it's, it's down to interpretation. But I wonder yeah, if video yeah. games have had an impact on that. I imagine they would, because you do... Well, you learn what you do, and you do what you learn. So if if from a very young age that you're learning to be nicer to people who need help or you're learning to like viva pinata raise pinatas in your little garden or <laughs> make your environment better or you know clean up yeah it's, yeah it like i i'm pretty sure that mario sunshine has taught me to clean up spilled paint <laughs> like by blasting I water s- at it yeah just pff, i wish i had a fucking flood pack you know i'd go yeah. down to those oil spills in the sea and i'd be blasting away <laughs> blasting oil i don't know if there's much more i can add to that like i completely agree and i i think it's probably made i think it, they've made me a better person like i'm sure they've made yeah. me nicer and like even when people say like you know we've, we've been on the subjects of like violence in video games before like i don't think that playing violent video games makes a person violent no I just, definitely not no i i think you can learn things studies. like there's there's no there's no correlation to it. If people are going to be violent, no. they're going to be violent. Movies yeah. do yeah. a lot worse. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think some fragile people will always be swayed by certain kinds of media, but I don't think you can like blanket statement everything. Uh, oh, I played Manhunt 1 and 2 as a kid, and 
I would never, never like <laughs> intentionally. I wouldn't intentionally like get into a fight. I just, I'm really kind of averse to oh. uh, violence. I just, I'm not a fan. Just doesn't, doesn't gel. Yeah, with me. I mean, in the Legend of Zelda, I've killed pel- plenty of sculptures, but. I don't like spiders, but I still put them out the window. I don't even squash them. I get exactly. a cu- I do the cup and paper technique. Whap, whap, and then get it out of there. The spiders in yeah. middle for fucking huge, man. Sometimes I don't have a oh, choice. I'm like, I, I don't have a cup big enough for you. So I just like <laughs> throw a shoe at it and then hope it leaves. I try to miss to scare it away. Throw, throws it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wouldn't be surprised. They are fucking massive out in the country. Yield countryside. Got to be big enough to yes. eat rats. Have you seen an ogre spider? No, but they sound sick. Google it. Google it now. Should I Google it right now? Yeah. Let's Google it. I'll yeah, stick I, it on the screen. I'd like to attribute some of me being a nice person to video games. Like some people attribute being a nice person towards like church and stuff. Yeah. Whoa, what the fuck is this spider? Whoa, that... Oh, it looks oh. like it's made out of stone, doesn't it? Oh, it's weird. Google oh, ogre spider, oh. everyone. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to stick it on screen for anyone watching on YouTube right now. Yeah, <laughs> make uh, it jump up like a jump scare. Yeah, oh, God, that's horrible. No, I can't do that. I'll have to put an arachnid <laughs> warning. So, okay, we'll, carry on. We'll move, from, <laughs> we'll move from morals. We'll go to uh, something similar, same, like the same kind of vein. So, yeah. video games are great at p- portraying different perspectives. They so are. Not just first yeah. person perspective, third person perspective. Not that. <laughs> So they are person? great at that, to be fair. So there, there actually is second person. I think you sent me the driver video, didn't you? Or was it Patty? So remember. there's a, a driver mission where you have to follow yourself in Driver San Francisco. And you're playing as the car in front of the car that is that you're in first person in. So you're controlling the car in front of you. And the, yeah, it's the big thing. Oh, well, okay. That's the second yeah, yeah. person mission. So, yeah, All right, I get you. So games are great, like, if you're choosing a good or bad playthrough or if they explain the motives of a villain quite well, it helps Mm -hmm. give you a perspective and makes you kind of see things objectively, which I think is a really... It's such a valuable thing in life, being able to critically, you know, critical think. It's so, so important. I'd like to think video games have helped me with that as well, in it, like, being able to objectively look at something... I go, I can see both sides of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is, is there any games recently that you've played that are a, a good example of that? Not so much recently. Uh, not off the top of my head anyway. Yeah. But I think... Any that come to mind? A, a really poor example would be <laughs> Fallout Tetris. 3. Fallout 3. <laughs> because... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you are asked to blow up Megaton, yeah, by Mr. Oh, Burke, yeah, that moment, yeah. So you get asked and you know, you can make up your own mind and you can talk to different people and be like, right, obviously you should really side with the town because the town's got loads of people in it and it's better morally to not blow up a town filled with innocent people. However, Mm -hmm. seeing it from the other perspective, it is a bit of an eyesore and that money can help you get to your dad faster, which in the grand scheme of things would save more lives in the long term. Oh, is that the Just reason? By, well, no, one that's that, an ISO. That's, but... that's the reason that you can put on it is that you need the money to help find your dad, basically. Okay, okay. Um, so you could use that excuse. Now, objectively, you can look at that, weigh up the pros and cons, and then go, I'm saving the town because that's fucking stupid blowing it up. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're doing like an intentional evil playthrough. But it, it's yeah. those little dilemmas where things not being black and white it's pretty nice. When I'm talking about like the uh, the morals thing before, a lot of games do do black and white and you can see like good and evil. So in real life, you can attribute things to either being good and evil. But yeah. in real life, it's not that simple. And video games kind of helping you have that objective mentality is really, really important. And it's a really, it's almost imperative that people learn about it because that's it is, where yeah. hatred comes from is where people don't see a difference between, you know, people don't see that there's a gray area. Yeah, and it's there like, always is a grey area. That's like, like look at Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, for example. Exactly. You've got that sliding scale of like whether you're doing good things yeah. or bad things. Yeah. But it's like, obviously, I'm not saying about any political parties, but it's like politics. It's like mm-hmm. you're allowed to be central. 
you're allowed to agree with certain things and disagree with certain things from both parties. Well, I say both parties because it's a two-party system in the majority of countries. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. But it's so, so important. You don't need to pick all one way or one all the, like, all the other. You're allowed to look at things objectively and just pick the things you like. And that's, yes. I, I like yeah. that video games can do that. I can't think of any examples at the minute, but if you can, make sure to drop a comment <laughs> Let on me know. Twitter yeah. or YouTube. I know there are, but I just can't think of any. Yeah, oh, yeah. Walking yeah. Dead, obviously. Obviously, The Walking Dead's got those. Situ- the one that we talked about in the zombies, getting shot in the, uh, shooting that woman who the zombies are going to attack. Do you shoot her to get yourself more time? Or do you leave her? Uh, no, leave her to get more time or shoot her to put her out of misery and it puts you in more danger. That's such a bad fucking choice as well. God. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. But go on, have, have you noticed anything? So playing games online, mm-hmm. do you feel like your communication skills have increased despite not being somewhere with someone and explaining something to them? Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, particularly because you often play with people who don't speak the same language as you as their first language. Okay. So you learn to break things down more effectively. And I don't know whether that's come across in helping us podcasting as well. Like I know that we, we obviously talk a lot for a living. This is what we do. So I think it's definitely helped in, in, in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially like you can't apex allows you to like ping things, doesn't it? It does. Like you don't, you don't even need to speak on Apex, really. You can do everything just by tapping the shoulder buttons. Back in the day, you couldn't do that. You had to say, go yeah. lefty, righty at the loop to loop, otherwise you ain't getting shit done. Yo, that you person killed nothing, you son. staying alive and then killing your mate as well. Do you remember the days of when it was literally, like, before it was party chat on Xbox, when it was just, like, game chat? It was chaos no. in, like, Call of Duty or something. No, I never did that, and I'm glad. Do you know Oh, it was rife. <laughs> I mean, it's still it's still pretty bad now. It's uh, stuff gets heated in competitive games. A lot of people say some weird shit. But yeah, I I like the aspects that the communities can give you with party chats. Like I love being able to talk to the squad that you're fighting with and not squad hear goals. anything else. Squad goals, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, squad goals. Being able to communicate communication it's on the squad goals yeah it's, uh, it's it's nice to be able to do that and it it i think it really helps with your immersion as well to be honest like when you're sneaking through the brush like coming up to a building and you can you you think you can hear someone because of the amazing sound design in the new call of duty like hear someone running about in the building above you and you're like i think there's someone in there sometimes you've got like the uh what's it what's it called the thingy chat the um local pro- chat like yeah, like proximity yeah. chat. Like they can hear you if you get close enough. I really like that aspect as well because it does something for, like I said, the immersion in the gaming. It makes you feel more connected to what you're doing as the character in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? What, what, you th- what are your thoughts on communication? Uh, I think it's definitely helped in terms of getting ideas across very quickly. If I need something mm-hmm. kind of. Not like this where I've got to explain things, but if I'm playing something like Counter-Strike, very quickly yeah. being able to get a point across of what's happening is they'd be like, uh, I, man, with thing. <laughs> uh, man, it's he's like, got a gun. <laughs> yeah, it's like AK connector or something like, um, all put connector, don't peek. Just like very quick, like there, da- that's it. Because okay. otherwise, person runs straight past and they die. So you've got to be able to very quickly kind of point things out and communicate, especially yeah. with counter-strike with people like mainly russia that's mm-hmm. like you need to very quickly be able to like say it clear enough You're like you're right mate yeah don't go in there or you get fucked up and they're just like what <laughs> like uh, what? <laughs> i don't know i i quite i quite like the uh the communication it's it's definitely an experience if you ever get into online gaming it's very very important that you start learning how to abbreviate things quickly based on the game you're playing that kind yes. of thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. Have you like managed to build any like proper friendships, like relationships through online gaming like that? Uh, just through playing games. Yeah. Uh obviously the the girlfriend Lucy at the time. The that girlfriend, was a big yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I met my friend Dan, a very good friend of mine. I think he's in the Discord now. Anesthesis. Yeah. Uh, met him playing yes. Payday yes. 2. We've been friends coming up to eight years, nine years. Nice. I so, didn't realize that you met on Payday 2. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he came to Mac and everything. Like, he came to my hometown. So he lived in Turkey at the time. Uh, and he's from oh, the fuck. UK. So yeah. he lived in Turkey. He came to visit his parents who were in Bournemouth. And then he was like... Very oh. far away. Yeah, he was like, right, I'll uh, I'll get the train up to Manchester if you want. And we can like go for a beer and stuff like that. So he, he came nice. up, we had a beer. And then we were like, oh yeah, crash on my sofa. Random guy we've met once. But we've been speaking <laughs> to him for about a year on the game. Yeah. Or like just day to day, just like getting to know him. It was really nice. And then I met the uh, the Blokemon crew. The Blokemon, who yeah. uh, some friends that I met playing Pokemon Go. So I was walking down the street one day. I was like, have you guys caught any shinies? Because it was a community day. And then we ended up nice. going to the pub, getting a bit drunk. I invited them back to my house to play VR for a bit. What's in? My Got housemate sexy. was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, I, I like how quickly you said Pokemon to play VR. Go. Yeah. You're like, we went for a few VR. drinks, invited him back to mine to play the VR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I walked in, my mate was like, who the fuck are these people? Like, they're cool. Like, he was, then 10 minutes later, he was like, yeah, they are pretty sick, to be fair. Yeah, these guys are cool. Daryl and these Tom. These are the Yeah. Yeah, Blokemon Classic boys. guys. So, yeah, <laughs> still still talk to them like three years on. Talk to them like in a WhatsApp group every day. Yeah, I think I, I met them as well, didn't I? And was that in Spoons? On a night out, yeah. You met a few. Yeah. Of them. I was, that was a good came, night. They came up and they were like, oh, you're a has, aren't you? You're like, yes. They're yeah, like, yeah, like, we listen to the podcast. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> you're your has, aren't you? And you're like, don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah don't, no, I don't know what thing. i've said yeah <laughs> that's very surreal though like i think even even like extending into podcasting the friends that you meet from doing any, any kind of online relationship is it it feels weirder than it is and i don't know why like you expect it to be way weirder like there's some disconnect but there isn't because everyone's more connected now especially while everyone's chatting through Zoom and Discord like we are at the moment, yeah, you're more connected than you would be even if you were together a lot of the time because you can talk whenever you want. Yeah, and I think I, that's why you make good friends that way. I think podcasting's a really weird one because it's like YouTube mm -hmm. where you spend so long listening to someone or if you yeah. listen to each other, you know each other a bit anyway despite never speaking. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a weird, weird thing where it's like, I know you, but you don't know me. And they're like, oh, I've listened to you. And you're like, you know me, and I know you. Let's get this <laughs> as a live thing. Yeah, yes, let's odd. do this together. Yeah, it's like when we, like we mentioned Shark Select before, when we got to meet the, those guys in, in person. Oh, yeah. That was such good fun. And we're definitely going to do it again soon, hopefully, once we can get in the studio. Now everyone's getting even more yes. vaccinated. Like, once I get vaccinated and everyone else, that'll be pretty fucking oh, cool. I can't wait. Have you found that... Like you said that you you met your your girlfriend. Like speaking about romantic relationships, have you found when you're in relationships that gaming has played a factor? <laughs> it's mainly played a negative factor in my life. That's what I was going to uh, ask about because like, I've got a friend yeah. called like shout out to Susie. I mentioned about possibly getting her on the podcast at some point in the future because she's oh, a, okay. a content creator. You know, she's a photographer. She's also a teacher, which is really cool. And she was saying that she got really frustrated at her boyfriend who would play a lot of online games. And that was what I wanted to know, like whether you've had any negative things from it. I've got, it's mainly two negative things for me. So okay. the, the first negative thing is procrastinating because video games are awful pro for procrastinating. They are. Um, like I, I'd hate to think what I could have learned in the time I've been playing video games, what I could have benefited from. You know what I yeah. mean? Like a guitar or drums or football or just levitation. Anything. Yeah, levitation. Why not? Magic <laughs> tricks. You know, you hear about magic these trick. magicians and stuff like that. I could have I could have just learned shit magic and just been really good at it by now. But I'm quite happy that I did stick with it with video games because it's just what I enjoy. I've had complaints that I played too many video games when I was with okay. people, but also like I got complaints I was like editing and stuff like that it's it depends if you've got if you're with someone who enjoys video games as much as you that's yes. fine 
But it's like you need to make sure you give enough time to the relationship and the partner. And that's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very easy for video games to get lost in them for like four or five hours and you just don't even realize. And that's one of the most difficult things. And you get the fear of missing out if there's stuff that you want to unlock oh, well. for a time thing. Mm -hmm. Like Dead by Daylight, if you wanted to unlock certain stuff, you have to do it with a certain date. Um, and it can also be if you're... Sorry, it's turned to like a full relationship thing. If you're dating relationship someone advice. <laughs> who doesn't have as many hobbies as you, or because video gaming is a hobby, if, yeah. if they don't have hobbies, it can feel like you're their hobby as well. So it means that you and you're enjoying yourself doing what you want with your mm -hmm. free time. But if they see what you're doing as a your relationship as a hobby, it can eat from there as well. It's really weird. Find find yourself a gamer GF or BF is what I'm saying. If you're a gamer, it helps. It does help. But Don't, that that, yeah. that, that uh, like that ties in really nicely with like resource management. And like I put a tweet yeah. out saying, "Has gaming made you better at resource management and like time management?" I because saw. at the end of the day, that is it all ties into it. And if your partner doesn't game, you should be managing your time and resources to make sure you spend time with them and do your own things at the same time. But it does massively help. Like um, my girlfriend at the moment, she is a gamer. She likes the game. So it kind of works well. We can't game online together because she's got a different console to what I've got, unfortunately. But I, I wonder if many people in the lockdown and the quarantine and stuff and have used it to sort of augment the relationship in any factor. I don't know. If you have, maybe let us know. I'd be interested in hearing about it. Yeah, please do. But yeah, I do wonder. Yeah. What do you think about resource management stuff? Have you got better at that sort of stuff? Especially with your love yeah. of like Frostpunk. Uh, I'm awful at resource management games. I'll tell you that much. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So uh, resource management is... Can you use that in a sentence, please? <laughs> well, yeah. You, I thought you were good at Frostpunk. Like... I, I'm, I'm all right. I'm not I'm not great. I'm, I'm pretty below average... I love the game. I'm just not very good at it. I'm clipping it's like that. I'm like pretty Warhammer below Total War, but average. I'm shit at it. <laughs> right, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, like resource management yeah, is like talking. getting like coal to burn or getting wood to build with. Like, what about like money management and all that sort of stuff? Like, has it made you oh, like are money skills like that? Stuff like that. Uh, no, no. It's uh, money. It's it's made money management harder because I want more video games all the time. You just bought a house, Jordan. You should be good at money management by now. <laughs> oh, mate, put money money management for that is like me just going into my accounts and be like, right, that is eight hundred pounds this month. I cannot spend on anything else. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that kind, kind of, of yeah, kind of counts. Then shove it in a fucking online saving account and then never look at it again. It's so yeah, depressing looking it at my bank accounts, seeing this massive amount of money, and then being like, I can't touch that. That's going in like a month. Yeah, that's going to be gone. That's going to be gone. Yeah. It's fun. Well, it'll be for fun something stuff. good. Something good. I mean, I've, I was trying to think of any other resources that I've ever built, and it's mainly like I think like Tetris. I know just stack shit, and then if you stack it all <laughs> well, it all disappears, like Bitcoin yeah. today, which a lot of people will be mad about. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. The yeah, floor, it's uh, floors dropped out, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's going back up. It's like it's hit the bottom, and then everyone's bought again, so everything's going back up. So don't you worry, yeah. you crypto people, you'll live. Buy in the dip. I did buy in the dip. <laughs> And buy the dip and it's again. still dipping <laughs> <laughs> yeah remember to skim the profit off the top skim the cream off the milk remember it this isn't financial advice you can't sue me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of anything else that tells you about resource wise in games uh money i'm all right at it i guess i'm better mm -hmm. now this is the most money i've ever saved in my life yeah uh, yeah food it makes me video games make me eat less because I forget. I put on a bit of podge recently, bit of podge. so I need yeah. to play more video games. I've been spending time with uh, a lady friend. What exercise. So yeah, you have. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to the lady friend. Shout out to the lady. We went to the zoo and it was nice. We saw oh. the animals. Yeah, we said. I was saying I don't trust camels. No, I. To be fair, I'm with you there. I saw giant otters. That was really cool. Giant. How big are we talking? Uh, one and a half meters. Damn, that's pretty big. Well, that's like the size of you. Four. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's about the size of me. I think they're about 1.3, 1.4 <laughs> meters. I 
think. But yeah, we were walking past and then I saw one's head pop out of the water because no one knew where they were. I was like, like, there they are. And they they climbed up on the like embankment thing. We just watched them for a minute. I saw a tiger. I was walking past and someone was like, where's the tiger? And loads of people walked past and I was like, there it is. And then they were like, and like ran back. (laughs) I just, like, tiger. couldn't see it. I was like, it's there. What the fuck are you looking at? They're like, yeah. The big ran fucking over. orange stripey thing. Yeah. What did you, where did you think it was? You dumb bastards. I saw, I saw like a, the best camouflage. I saw a bear. Kind of bear. A sun bear, I think. Sun, oh yeah, I know a sun bear. Yeah. Yeah. So far you've just been describing gay men. You were like, I saw an otter. I saw a bear. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a badger. I saw a twink down at the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a switch. What's a switch? I don't know. I think that's a sexual preference thing opposed to like... Adam, let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Right. I think... Uh, yeah. Oh, video I- games. Video games, I think, might influence my taste in women, but I don't know. How about you? I don't know. I don't know if they affect my taste in women. Uh... Right. I don't think let's so. Put, let's put it this way, Harrison. Are you attracted to mm. any alien women out of video games? I don't think so. You played any Mass Effect games? I haven't yet. I want to pick up the new one. I've been hearing some oh, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Are there any characters? Are there any video... Uh, are you more attracted to blonde w- women in skin suits now that you've played Metroid? Oh, with big armor. Yes, I like my lady strong. <laughs> <laughs> and video games have helped me with that. And, no, I like, I like powerful women, eight you know. Foot, are like... you more attracted to nine foot vampire ladies? Nine foot six. You nine Don't you forget six that six. Ladies. I think everyone is. I think everyone's attracted to her so far. Over, that's 69. Lol. Oh, the sexy number. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to think if there's anything else. I've got like a couple of notes at the bottom of my notes about this. Like I learned from Zelda that music yeah, is pretty important. About, yeah, like, you know, we like those ladies. No, I think music is very important. Music is important to a lot of people. And Zelda taught me that. And yeah. it also taught me that when you grow up, you got to wear tights. But when you're a child, you're allowed to wear, you know, show some leg. <laughs> <laughs> taught me that. You can operate uh, time. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, WWF Warzone for the N64. This is my last one. I'll end this on, you need a special move. And okay. you have to have a theme song. Mine was Kiss My Grits a lot of the time because it was hilarious. What would your theme song be, Jordan? Probably Crystals by Moon. Crystals by Moon? Never heard it, but I will check it out. Uh, and I'll put it in the Hotline link. Miami. Hotline Miami is the oh, okay. first proper game that I played where I was like, I didn't know... <clears throat> a video game soundtrack could slap this hard. Oh, this slaps so hard. Yes, exactly. I don't know if you heard that because the the Discord cutting out slaps. I I did a big slap. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. I keep getting some stuck in my throat. It's a lot to cut out. Oh, it's all those dicks. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) How did you know? I just love dicks so much. So Jordan, where <laughs> could they find that. you? If- <laughs> uh, find me at, uh, at the Mr. John Core, pretty, mu- pretty much everywhere. And how about can you? Indeed. And you can find me at HasWild, as you can see on the screen below. And you can find the podcast in all of its glory in at Grief Burrito everywhere. Don't forget Literally to like, everywhere. subscribe, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Check out Cephalopod is on there. Make sure to subscribe on there. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we leave this episode off, Jordan? Send us your funniest animal gif at us on Twitter. I want to see it. Yeah, man. I, I please, thought it was going to be something weird. I think it was like, send us your pants or something weird. I was like, don't send us your I pants. Mean, we don't have a P.O. box or anything. So that would be... Maybe we should get a no, P.O. The address, box eventually. Maybe we should. Because like, the address don't list is just my business. Address. Jesus Christ. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I had to tell you before you did it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's go. See you next week, guys. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.